In this session, I am going to demonstrate how to develop a web application for exploratory data analysis. EDA, as you may be aware, is a set of uh, analysis techniques that we do on our data set before we build machine learning models. We do these analysis to ensure that our data is ready for building machine learning models and we want to extract maximum value out of our data set. We want to ensure that our data set doesn't have null values, don't have relationship uh, among one another, especially in the case of independent variables. We want to remove outliers. All these analysis are done as part of exploratory data analysis. So EDA is like the zeroth step in building a machine learning model. Now we want to show the results of EDA in the form of graphs uh, and visuals so that everybody understands uh, what is really in our data set. Why not we show these results through a web app? That's what we are going to attempt in this session. Now to build a web app, uh, someone who has knowledge of uh, machine learning should also know uh, web technologies like JavaScript, HTML, CSS uh, and other uh, related technologies. Normally people who pursue uh, specialization in machine learning don't venture into the website and similarly people who are specializing in web technologies don't venture into the machine learning uh, side of the house. So how will someone with knowledge of machine learning uh, can really develop uh, a app without knowing uh, the web technologies? That's where uh, Streamlit really fills the gap. Streamlit is a platform using which you can build machine learning models, uh, machine learning web applications, uh, without really knowing HTML, CSS and web technologies. That's the beauty of Streamlit platform. So we're going to be using Streamlit platform and demonstrate how to build uh, a web application for a machine learning need. Okay, in this case it is exploratory data analysis. So that's what we are going to see in this session. We will start off with understanding the infrastructure uh, behind Streamlit and then understand some basic functionalities of Streamlit and afterwards we will build the application for EDA. So that's how we are going to go about in this session. In this session, let us understand the infrastructure that is needed for building Streamlit apps. We need to download Anaconda. You can search for the same in Google. When you click this, it will take you to the download page and you can download the individual edition for Windows. Please note that it takes a while for Anaconda to get installed. Please be patient and do not stop the install process midway. The other thing we need is Notepad to write the Python programs. We will save the notepad as .py file. Search for notepad++ in Google and go for the latest release and you are good to go. Both Anaconda individual edition and notepad are free to use. Once you have installed Anaconda, you can install Streamlit using Anaconda's command prompt itself. You access the Anaconda's command prompt using the start menu and you can give pip install streamlit command in Anaconda prompt itself to install streamlit. You can install other libraries too like numpy, pandas here itself. Okay, so now we are ready to start coding for building the Streamlight app. In this session, we are going to create 
our first web app using Streamlit. All that we are going to do in that web app is to display Hello World. You may be aware that Hello World is what we normally print first in any programming language, including Python. Okay. And uh, I have typed the necessary commands in my notepad. Okay. So the first step I need to do is import streamlet as st. That is the first step that I do. Then st.text will display hello world. What I am trying to do here in these two is whatever gets printed as hello world, I am trying to change the font size and font color. That's all I am trying to do. For that I am using markdown, st.markdown. That's what I am trying to do here. Okay. Now let's try to save this. I am going to save this in streamlit folder that I have created in my desktop. Okay, this is the streamlit folder as you can see here. It is in desktop and it is, uh, you know, this is the streamlit folder. Uh, what you are seeing here is other apps that I am going to be showing towards the later part of the session, uh, later part of this program. Uh, the initial part of the program is going to introduce you to various options in streamlit. That's what we are doing now. Okay. Now let's save this uh, um, notepad. Okay. Let's save this file. Save as. We will give app is already there. So we will give app as the file name is already there. So we will give app to dot py. Okay. You can save. Now this is saved. Okay. Now let's come and see here. App2 is there. Okay. Now we are going to run this app. Okay. We have created in Python. Uh, we have typed this in notepad. Now we have to run this. Only then we can see the output which is the web app. Right. Uh, we have already installed Anaconda. So now for running this file, we go to start menu and then Anaconda prompt. Right. Now we have to reference the file that is stored in streamlit folder which is there in desktop. For that we change the directory cd desktop. Right. Right now before this command uh, the directory is pointing to c users kumar. Okay. We need to change the directory to desktop first and then to streamlit. Okay. Now we are ready to run. So the command is streamlit run app2.py. We are running it now. Very shortly, you will see the link using which we can access the app. In fact, the app will open in the default Chrome browser, right? You can see here the URL to access the app, the local URL and the network URL is there. And the app has opened in the default browser, which is nothing but Chrome in my case. Okay, and you can see here hello world, and then we have changed the color and the font size. Right? So this is our first app. Okay, hello world, we have created our first and a very, very simple web app. We will slowly add other functionalities and test it. Okay, and after that, we will get into projects. If you see here, uh, there is option to rerun, clearing the cache, uh, deploying the app, right? You can even record this entire thing, which I am going to demonstrate a little later. Uh, and then uh, you have settings. Okay. So these are the options that are available in Streamlit. Okay. Very simple, right? Now, 
let's see uh, and make some changes and see how streamlet operates okay instead of hello world we will say hello right or, or say good morning let's go and do that okay instead of hello world we will say good morning morning we will mention it here right all that you need to do is because you have made the change come here save it you don't need to rerun the file you just have to refresh as you can see here source file has changed right you get this message okay rerun always rerun these options are there now let's rerun and you have good morning right in this session we are going to create headers subheader title and also warning and success messages as you may be aware in any app you will have successful processing of data or information if uh, data is not properly processed it will raise an error or it may throw a warning okay we want these kind of options to be available in our app right because we are looking at developing a full-fledged app right in addition to that we will also have header and subheader and also title for the app so that's what we are going to create in this session right our first step is of course import streamlit as st now what we are going to do is we are going to save this file okay as a new app then we are going to run the app in the command prompt that's what we are going to do okay now let us uh, save this file in uh, streamlit folder let's call this as app3.py okay we have saved it let's see if the file is there yeah app3.py file is there now let's go to anaconda prompt and run this let's change the directory cd streamlet now let's run it you need to first start with streamlet run app3.py i'm demonstrating this uh, once again because i want you to be very clear with how to write the command how to save the file in a folder reference that folder in command prompt and then run it okay now i'll click enter you will have the local url and network url that has come and it's also opening in my default browser see here beautifully it has come header subheader you can give different uh, names also right title this is something we saw earlier too markdown and then success warning and error the, if you see these are in different colors and if you want you can change these colors and the font size uh, using what i described in the earlier session clear simple right this is also a web app if you see this is also a web app all we are doing is we are displaying certain words okay we will slowly build additional options and complexity what you're going to see in the project is you're going to actually upload a file machine learning algorithm is going to run in the back end and you're going to see the results how beautiful it is right okay in this session we will see how to access a file that is stored in the folder and also display the contents of that file when i am referring to contents i am referring to data because we are interested in developing an ai app so obviously we are interested in data and the file that we are going to read is 
a CSV file. Okay, we are going to reference a file that is stored in a folder, read it, and then display the contents in our web app. That's what we are going to do. Okay, so this is the app that we created in the previous session. I'm going to use the same app that is I'm going to delete all this and uh, write code for reading a file and then displaying the contents of the file. Okay. Uh, these are the set of commands that are of relevance as far as the previous session is concerned and the current app that is there, right? That is header, subheader, success warning and error. Okay. Now I'm going to delete them. Okay. All I have to do is I have to save this and then rerun. You see here source file has changed. Let's rerun. Oh, we are getting an error here. Okay. This is something you must learn. Okay. Debugging is both a science as well as an art. I have got an error. Now let's see what the error is. Name ST is not defined. How is that possible? Oh, if you see this, I have not imported Streamlight. I accidentally deleted it while deleting the commands relevant for the app that we developed in the previous session. So let's import Streamlight as ST. Okay. Now, this file, file1.csv, is there in Streamlight folder. I'll show this file1. This is there in Streamlit folder, there is a comma separated values file, a CSV file, right? Now let's save it and come to app. You see that source file has changed. Let's rerun. The file is displayed, right? Customer ID, everything is displayed here. Simple, right? And now we can create graphs. We can process this file. We can run algorithms on this data. Okay. Many different kind of activities can be done. In this session, we are going to see EDA app. That is a web app to do exploratory data analysis activities. Okay. So let me first show you the data set that we are going to be using. We are going to be using a banking data set where factors like uh, education, employment, income, loan tenure, loan amount, credit history and similar factors are being considered. Okay. Unfortunately, the data contains null values okay. and there may be a relationship between the independent factors also. Okay. So we need to address these things before the data set can be taken for developing a machine learning model, right? So we are going to be doing EDA on this file or any other file using our app, okay? So that's what we are going to see in this session. So let me take you through the codes uh, that are relevant for the EDA activities, okay? And uh, I'm going to explain the codes using uh, flowchart because it helps you to understand what is there in the code behind developing the uh, app for EDA. Okay. Before we begin, we have to import the necessary libraries. Okay. We have to import Streamlit as ST, Pandas as PD, Plotly.express, that is for developing graphs, and of course, NumPy as NP. Okay, so we need to do all these things before we begin. Okay, the uh, importing of uh, necessary libraries should be completed before we begin uh, the actual coding. Okay, so the steps that are going to be involved are we are going to start with uh, title and markdown, right? So we have to give a name for this app, right? And provide additional details that we want to appear in the app. So that is the first step. So st.markdown, we are saying this app performs EDA. We are mentioning what are the libraries that are used. And I'm also providing, if you need any assistance, you can contact. 
okay so this is a spelling mistake uh, please pardon me for that okay so you can contact or you can give your contact details and here i have given contact details of my company okay so this is what we do in title and markdown and then we go to uploading of the file okay because i need to upload the file right so that is a single line of code so here we use a file underscore uploader and here we mention csv and upload a file you know this these words are mentioned there please note that you know this uh, app is developed for csv files only if you upload an excel file that is an xls file you are obviously going to encounter an error right then we need to see if the file upload has been successful or not if the file upload is successful we need to read the file right so let's do that now which is we are checking if file underscore bytes is not none okay file underscore bytes is the variable that we have declared for uploading of the file right and then we are asking uh, reading of the file to be done okay and that's what we are doing here and after that we are going to remove the null values and remove replace them with mean and more okay we are going to create a button to remove the null values and we are going to replace the numeric uh, values with mean and non numeric values with more okay mean is nothing but arithmetic average and mode is the frequently occurring number right so if you see here we are creating a button okay and before that we are creating a header so that it is clear to remove null values please press the button okay and we are also giving a label for the button right and then we are going to replace with a uh, mean in the case of numeric values and mode in the case of non numeric values right and that's what we are doing here if class is equal to object right we are going to replace that with mode right that means this is a non numeric uh, value clear so we complete these activities in this step and now for the next one okay if the number of null values is zero we want a message to be displayed okay else we want to create and show a graph that basically tells the number of null values that are there in each of the different factors right that's what we are doing here if you see this right uh, st dot right is to display okay the number of values that are there and we are going to be using plotly uh, for the purpose of the graph clear okay the next set of activities will involve creating a frequency chart and then we are creating a histogram and then we are going to see a correlation chart okay so these are some of the activities that you can do in eda in fact you can do more activities also what i have shown is some of the basic activities that are done in eda right through this app you are going to upload the file and all these activities will be done with the click of a button right now let's see this we are creating uh, a frequency uh, chart okay in this uh, using plotly and then we are creating a histogram okay histogram is like a bar chart you're going to see that now that i'm going to demonstrate it again using plotly but the key point to note is we need to determine the number of bits that is the range of the frequency the and how many bars should be there in the histogram should be predecided okay if you're going to uh, say use excel to create uh, a histogram the number of bins is computed automatically by excel but since we are creating an app ourselves we have to determine the number of bits that is the number of bars that will appear in histogram need to be computed so for this we are using this formula okay other than that the coding is very simple we are going to display saying you know this is a bar chart okay and then we are going to be showing the graph clear okay the next step is correlation chart here we want to look at the relationship between two uh, 
continuous variables between two continuous independent variables if there is a relationship between two independent variables it can adversely impact our forecast accuracy ideally we should not have a relationship between two independent variables right so for this we are going to use px dot scatter this will show the extent of relationship that is there between two independent variables we are going to plot that using plotly okay and then we are going to say that you know this is a, a, a scatter plot for correlation which we are displaying using st dot right okay so i have explained to you what is there in the coding for developing the app now let's go and run the app see how the app looks we will upload the data and we will check what is the kind of output we are getting in our app okay so what you are seeing here is the complete set of codes that i explained using flowchart in fact i broke this set of codes into different steps and explained it using flowcharts because when explaining using the codes written in uh, a notepad file is not really user friendly okay i have found that explaining using flowchart is helpful okay we have already saved this file as edaapp.py now let's go and see the uh, see this file in streamlit folder where is that eda app is there eda app.py and this is the eda data that we are going to upload and this is a csv file okay now let's uh, run the app from the anaconda command prompt okay first uh, change the directory cd desktop cd streamlet now we are ready to run streamlet run e eda app.py press enter it will run uh, we will see the url and it's going to open up in the default browser right see this here the title all the details uh, that we typed are there uh, need to contact you can mention and if you want you can put a um, image of your logo also and this is where you upload the file let's upload browse eda data okay let's wait uh, for a second for the graphs to populate right so number of null values across different uh, factors are mentioned right we have a total of 149 null values so let we can remove them okay now let's say remove null right you can see here the total number of null values has become zero okay and this is the bar plot to count the values based on a range the bar plot to know the frequency of each category is mentioned here right uh, i have chosen gender uh, that's what is the first one we can choose married right how many people are married and how many are not married you know in our data set right we can choose let's say dependents uh, people with no dependents uh, applicants with one dependent so on and so forth right the number of dependents you know this is a, a simple bar plot what you see below is actually a histogram remember i mentioned we need to identify the number of bins we calculated the number of bins programmatically so this is based on a range right uh, what you see here is based on applicant income we can choose co-applicant income see uh, can you see one more aspect the chart above is for object variables that is non-numeric right can you see here the chart above is for non-numeric right the chart below that is this chart is for numeric integer or float variables right we have done all this programmatically this histogram is for numeric variables right see here applicant income co-applicant income loan amount credit history which is also uh, a numeric variable 
right? And finally, we will evaluate correlation, okay? Scatter plot for correlation, we need to select two variables and all of them are numeric. Please note that, okay? Scatter plot that studies the relationship between any two variables is only for numeric variables. Non-numeric variables, we need to use chi-square and other kind of tests, okay? What I'm demonstrating in this app is correlation, right? Which is why you see we have culled the fields relevant for numeric type of data. Now let's choose applicant income, co-applicant income, right? Can you see here? We will come down. See that scatter plot is there, okay? It is mostly a weak correlation, okay? R square will be about 0.5 or so. In fact, you can display R square also. That is also possible. R square that shows the extent of relationship between any two variables. As I mentioned earlier, EDA involves many activities. What I have shown here is a set of few activities that can be automated and displayed as a web app. Users can upload the data and do the set of activities, that is the EDA activities, to get the results instantly. Okay.